Welcome, bad movie fans, to the very first episode of Hollow Victories, where all the winners are losers. I'm Matt Presents, you probably know me, because I own the channel this is going up on, but in case you don't, in case you're just joining us, I talk about a lot of movies, a lot of bad movies. Uh, those are my two favorite things, talking about movies and talking about bad movies. And I am joined today by my immaculate co-host... Hello, I am Movie Mackle. You may have heard of my channel. I've done a, I've done a few videos of Matt on this channel. I think one actually. <laughs> uh, I got I two 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 because I guest starred in the other one. Uh, Matt's been on my channel quite a few times now, and I, honestly, I've actually had several people from your channel leave a comment on mine saying that they're here from Matt Presents. So b big special thank you to your subscribers for that. It's very nice. Uh, I do and, have a. Pl I I have a playlist on my channel of the movie, of the videos I've been in on your channel. Yeah, I've seen that, actually. Got a little bit of Brigade, brigade stuff on there, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess my main series on the channel, which Matt has appeared on numerous times, more and more frequently, uh, as of late, is Mackle and Zatch, where we talk about Rich Alvarez and Shark Tale all day long. Uh, in case you couldn't figure it out from, from the title of... The show, the title of the video, Hollow Victories, is uh, a movie versus movie podcast. But unlike other movie versus movie podcasts, all of the movies we're going to talk about have been poorly received by audiences. Um, I'm not gonna. We talked about this. I'm not gonna say bad movies because I do want to leave the door open for movies that were poorly received that one of us uh, liked. Yeah, and if if you at home enjoy one of these movies, I I don't want to feel you to feel left out. So you know, these are poorly reviewed, not necessarily bad. Um, although today's two films are quite a doozy. <laughs> uh, we're talking about which movie is better, and our definition of the word better is very loose. <laughs> Um, it could just be which one we had more fun with. Like one could be more yeah, shot well than the other, but be boring. It could be completely subjective, it could be completely objective, it could be some mix of the two. It's just whatever we think qualifies as better. What's a, you know, what what's a movie that's, like, received really poorly? Like, I mean, like, below a 50, maybe, like, in the 30 percents, maybe even lower than that, that you actually, you like it and you kind of like it unironically. Mmm. Mmm. That if you is can a think good of question. one. I'd, I'd, I'd have to look. I am, I am a fan of some like really bad kind of gross movies. <laughs> so, um, offhand, I might say very bad things. Gotcha. Um, so it's a dark comedy from the late '90s that I really like, but no one else seems to. <laughs> I, I liked uh, Every Which Way But Lose, which was a movie with Clint Eastwood in it. Now, I haven't seen it since I was really young, and that movie was really poorly received. I think I was in high school last time I saw it, but I do have positive memories of it. That's, that's the one where he has a monkey, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it, but I, I, I want to watch it. Let me look at that. I, I looked that up real quickly. Uh, <laughs> Every Which Way But Lose, because I think it's really poorly received, but I really liked it. Uh, IMDb, it's not that bad, actually. I was looking for Rotten Tomatoes, but I can't even find it. Uh, and I'm also a defender of the chum scrubber. <laughs> well, would you like to go ahead and get into our first movie today? Yes, I would. Uh, so, so, you introduce it. Our first movie is Batman and Robin. Uh, 1998? Shoot, I probably should have looked that up. <laughs> Masterpiece. Uh, I think it's 1997. 97. Okay, yes. Batman and Robin, 1997. The final installment in the Batman quadrilogy. Um, directed Definitely the most controversial. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I might disagree. I think I think the middle two are pretty controversial, whereas this one, everyone's like, nope, it's bad. I guess that I'm using the wrong word. It's the most uh, infamous, maybe. Infamous, yes. Definitely the most infamous. Um, directed by Joel Schumacher. Um, starring George Clooney, 
uh, Chris O'Donnell. Quite a star-studded cast, actually, yeah. and also Chris O'Donnell. <laughs> um, uh, Clooney, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Uma Thurman, Alicia Silverstone all have major roles in the film. Yeah. Um... Uh, in the story, Batman and Robin are chasing uh, Mr. Freeze, who's trying to steal diamonds because he has a condition where he has to stay at zero degrees Celsius and his suit is powered by diamonds, which seems impractical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he uses the Chaos Emeralds, basically. Yes. <laughs> um, and as they're chasing him, this botanist this this plant scientist uh ends up in a chemical accident and discovers she can now control plants and kills people when she kisses them uh that poison ivy from the batman comics and she tries to team up with mr freeze uh which works for a little while and then it doesn't yeah not my favorite, uh, I, I, honest to God, like when it comes to different Batman character portrayals, I have like a limited amount. I need to take a look at the animated series. Uh, but when it comes to Poison Ivy, this is one of the least popular ones, I believe. Like the uh, one in the animated series people really like and the one in that new Harley Quinn show people seem to like a lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't uh, know about Uma Thurman. <laughs> it's really silly. It's a really I, silly performance. Listen, I like Uma Thurman. She oh, was she's not great. right for this role. She's she amazing. She was not right for this role at all. <laughs> I, I remember because we, we were watching it on our Discord server, and you mentioned that uh, while we were watching it. Uh, you also mentioned during it that Batman was casted three separate times. Was he George Clooney in the last two? No, this is the only time Clooney was ever Batman. Damn. Uh, who was who uh, played him in the other ones again? Uh, in... The first two, it was Michael Keaton, and then Val Kilmer played him in Forever. Clooney's a decent actor in a lot of stuff he's in, but uh, I, I just I did not think anyone in this movie was likable, including him. The closest you got to a likable character in it was uh, Alfred, but they do something kind of shitty with him, too, which we'll get into. Performance-wise, he kind of had that old man charm to him, though. He wasn't too bad. He was yeah. probably the uh, better, one of the better people in it. Yeah, Michael Go, the only actor to appear in all four movies, I believe, because he is Alfred in yeah. the '89 Batman. Um, yeah, everyone else gets recast except him. They try to give him kind of like this big emotional payoff that could kind of actually be the one thing that this movie gives like some closure on, but then they just cop out at the end because he's like dying of an illness in this movie. Uh and they have, like, all these flashbacks, and it's supposed to be really emotional. And then in the end, it's just like, ah, oh, he's cured. He's all good now. And it's just, like, trying to set up this emotional payoff without actually committing to it at all, which is annoying. Yeah. Um, it's very cartoony. Yeah. Like, both, both stylistically and in the story. And I, I rewatched the sum of Batman 89. I didn't finish Batman 89, but I, I did go back and take a look at it because I do really like that movie. And it's like comic booky. Like it's not realistic at all, but it, it's a lot more like a comic book. Whereas yeah. this seems like a Saturday morning cartoon for children. Yeah. I this mean, you definitely like, go ahead. Sorry. Th this is like, first off, they completely ignore physics. The entire movie. Just, yeah. like, fuck physics. Fuck ever making sense. <laughs> but then, like, the story is so juvenile. It's like, oh, Batman and Robin are mad at each other, and now they gotta learn to be friends to defeat the bad guy. That was just such a plot point that they wanted to shove in there. Robin is immediately annoyed with Batman. Like, there's no build-up to it whatsoever. He's just randomly, like... Uh, I don't like you, Batman. He just, like, starts being a smartass about every single thing he can. This is why Superman works alone. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's not... Everybody talks about how much of a bitch Robin is in this movie, but it's like but it's like they don't even, like, set it up, you know? 
Yeah. It just kind of feels like that they wanted that to be the conflict, so that's the conflict. Batman doesn't the worst thing Batman does is not let him do a stunt that is going to like make him fall off and die. <laughs> he's not convinced that he can make the jump, so he's like, "Yeah, don't fucking kill yourself. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to kill myself. Okay, I'm turning your engine off." <laughs> Which also could have killed him. So. Yeah, to be, yeah, to be fair, that, that could have killed him. <laughs> it's it's a tad like a uh, Superman or Spider Man three problem of just like too many villains. Yeah, because they they have. I don't mind two villains teaming up, but then they've also they also throw Bane in there. Mm. And he's just the worst fucking Bane, the worst interpretation of the comic book character. He's supposed to be smart, he's, right? Yeah, he's supposed to be like like Batman's equal, you know, even yeah. even potentially superior, right? He's he's as strong and as fit and as smart as Batman. And that's what makes him a challenge. In this movie, he's just dumb wrestler man. It felt like the Dark Knight series was trying to separate the characters from the comic books a little bit. Like, their version of the Joker is pretty different from the comic book's version of the Joker. They were going for something new. But even that definitely felt like it's, like, more accurate to what the character is supposed to be in The Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, like, uh, where it feels this, like... This, this is kind of like, like Deadpool s- levels when they put Deadpool <laughs> in one of the X-Men movies that everybody hated. Yeah. And even the Deadpool movies made fun of. <laughs> this is definitely that level yeah it feels like someone saw a picture of bane and was like oh strong wrestler man put the strong wrestler man in your movie (laughs) and joel schumacher's like uh okay i don't know who this character is fuck it yeah dear old joel schumacher um i hmm to the best of my knowledge this is the only superhero movie directed by a gay man oh yeah I I might I might be wrong about that. Someone might hit me in the comments with like, "Ah, oh, this movie was directed by this guy." But to my knowledge, this is the only superhero movie I can think of that was directed by at least an openly gay man. You get some and nice ass shots at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it, that does make for an interesting visual tone to the movie. <laughs> like you know, we spend a lot of time on Batman and Robin and, like, look how hot they are, look how muscly they are. And even, I pointed this out to you, the scene where Poison Ivy shows up at, like, yeah. this big gala event and she's supposed to be seducing Batman and Robin. When she walks in, she is escorted by, like, a dozen buff shirtless men. <laughs> It's just like, yep, this this woman is hot. Please ignore all of the buff shirtless men. That's not why I find this scene hot. <laughs> Wink. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, do, I do remember you talking about that during the movie. That's the infamous bat credit card scene. <laughs> Indeed. That I looked the away from when we were watching card. it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was really upset. <laughs> Never leave the cave without it. <laughs> uh, was there like a like a logo on that for like a specific bank or a specific like credit card? Like I was don't it a Visa? Think so, or... but maybe, maybe, because <laughs> that feels like it's like where you put in a product placement. The way they do yeah. that shot, yeah, that that feels very product placey. But uh, maybe you could get a back credit card, like as like a like as a style for your credit card. I don't know. I'm I'm sure there have been Batman credit cards. <laughs> Bat credit card. Got a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in this movie, and he feels like he's he's kind of the only one having a really good time with it. Yeah, he does look like he's having fun. He does kind of get get really into it. It's really silly. It's really over the top. <laughs> but I would say that it was like it it was entertaining <laughs> at the very least. Yeah, I I might go so far as to say Schwarzenegger is the best part of the movie. Even though he is very silly, but that's, you know, sort of what Schwarzenegger is good at, is being very silly. 
Yeah, I did like a lot of the side characters' reactions. Like, that scientist who <laughs> is the first person that Poison Ivy kills, and he also tried to kill her. His fucking shouts and yells and reaction to, st- to stuff is just like, nothing sounds natural. There's not a single noise that it comes out of someone's mouth in this movie that sounds natural. <laughs> and it's really funny. I, I will say that this movie, like, uh, all things considered, like, what I consider, like, the worst type of movie is just something that's boring. And this movie is anything but that because the entire oh, film yeah. is just full of fascinating choices. Like, with how a line is delivered, with, like, something they do. Like, there's a, I mentioned this when we were watching. There's a really fucking weird editing choice in one of the scenes where they're trying to, I think it's like Robin is like drowning in water in like po- this pool of in po- poison Ivy's house or her cave or whatever. And, um, and like, he's trying to get out of the water and he's kind of drowning, but they like play it. And then they reverse that shot. Uh, oh, mm. I think it was actually like Batgirl shows up and pushes poison Ivy into the water. Maybe that's what and it was. They, and then they, played it in reverse that yeah. was weird it was really weird like that was one of the weirdest like and it's so so small and it seems so pointless to even mention it like it's not at the end of the day it is a small thing but it's so fucking weird it's one of the weirdest choices i've ever seen why not just film that for a couple seconds longer is that it, it like did they cut the shot off early they needed to go a little longer and that was literally the only shot they had of that <laughs> what the fuck was that <laughs> Just cut the shot slightly Just, quicker. <laughs> I have no fucking know, clue. <laughs> it, it is a film full of baffling choices. Yeah. And and it can be hard to tell where the line is, because it seems like... Like, Schumacher had an idea for what he wanted to do, but then the studio also had an idea for what they wanted to do, and... It mm-hmm. kind of mucks up. N- neither of them were particularly good ideas, <laughs> but together they're a worse idea. <laughs> I uh, will. So yeah, I, I'll give it credit for something other than being really funny. Um, I don't think there's like attempts at there's obvious attempts at comedy in this movie, but it's like oh yeah, I don't I don't know if I would say there's anything that's unironically funny in the movie. I do laugh at the horrible catchphrases, the horrible jokes by the characters, just because of how unbelievable it's. Uh, it's really and it's also just really over the top. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I would say it's a little bit more self aware than Catwoman. It at least um, feels that way to me. Um, yeah, I think I think there's some truth to that. Although, <laughs> I don't know, maybe not. Like, it's self-aware when it's doing silly stuff, like completely ignoring the laws of physics. But I mm-hmm. don't think they realize how bad the jokes are. Yeah. Um, and And some of them loop back around to being actually funny, even though they're not good jokes. My favorite line in... In in this movie, in a lot of in maybe any movie, Schwarzenegger just yelling, "What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice <laughs> Age." <laughs> That's what I'm saying with the self awareness. Don't you think when Schwarzenegger was make like doing that performance, he had to be aware that it was a little oh. silly? <laughs> Schwarzenegger probably knew it was a little silly. I don't know if Schumacher knew that it was a little silly. Yeah, I don't know if Robin's actor thought knew it was a little silly either, because he kind of seemed like he was getting into it. Like, look at how troubled his character is. Look at the injustice. Look at how cool he is in this motorcycle scene. Uh, there, I, there's not a lot of self awareness with like him or George Clooney, I don't think. But uh, but Schwarzenegger, Nate, Schwarzenegger, I'm fucking can't talk. Definitely a lot <laughs> more self awareness with him. Yeah. Uh. George Clooney kind of strikes me as someone who was there for a paycheck. Yeah. Like, on some level, I think he was slightly invested, because he's like, you know, I'm Batman, Batman's popular, there could be a lot more money in this. But at the same time, he he's not totally checked in. He's not totally dedicated to being Batman. Yeah. I definitely he's think decent- someone could do worse than him. Yeah, uh, I definitely think he could do better in a better movie. Yeah. I think he is a decent Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the writing, honestly, with him. That sets it back so much. Yeah, 
Because it's just so many scenes where he has to look off to the side while he's talking to Alfred to remember pleasant memories from the past. There's so many scenes of him, I don't know, just like... I don't know, like the scene where uh, Poison Ivy kind of comes and talks to him the first time, but she's still dressed up like the way she used to look like. Well, what was the character's name before she became Poison Ivy? Fuck me, I don't remember. Fucking don't remember <laughs> either. But, you know, the first time she talks to Bruce Wayne, like, I don't know, just he he kind of comes off as unlikable in that scene, and I don't know if he's supposed to come off as unlikable. Um, I just think it's a bad script. I don't... The movie is, feels kind of mean spirited, and I get we did yeah. kind of talk about this with like Robin being a bitch and him and Batman fighting the whole movie, but like they are really unlikable in this movie. Yeah, they're just they're at each other's throats from from the jump. From the jump, they're at each other's throats. Yeah, it seems. It seems seems really slow. I fucking love when, when Robin gets off his bike and he's staring at Batman after Batman turned his engine off and he just does that fucking villain scream. Like he sounds like the fucking bad guy in that scene. He's like, ah! <laughs> he's I love like, when, when when they're like rushing to like, oh, there's a robbery going on. Quick, let's hop in the Batmobile quick. And then like, Robin has to wait, like, a full minute for this, like, pod to come out, and the pod opens, and there's, like, li- like, uh, sh- those lights inside, neon lights inside his pod, where he keeps his motorcycle, and he- it's like, Robin, people are in danger, could you, could you hurry it up? Could you maybe just park the motorcycle next to the Batmobile? You don't need all the theatrics. <laughs> No yeah. one can see this. You're in the bat cave. No one can see it. <laughs> There's just some like really awkward moments with the characters too where they're doing something because the script tells them to do it, not because it actually makes sense. Like the scene where Freezer at the very beginning freezes Robin and that entire time like Batman and Freezer are just standing there awkwardly as Robin's frozen and he says if you want us you can either save him or chase after me. And then like Batman and him just kind of stand there awkwardly for a few seconds. <laughs> like, Freezer could, um, A, Freezer could freeze Batman as well as Robin, and they'd both be good goners because no one else is there to help them. Or Batman could try to, like, kick him and, like, kick him to the ground, and if that doesn't work out, just go grab Robin real quick. I don't know. He wasn't fucking shoot doing one anything. Of those, like, the thousand grappling hooks he has, just shoot one around <laughs> Freezer's legs, and then, like, yeah. all right, hold on, let me deal with Robin, and then I'll get to you. Clearly, like, he mentioned, like, oh, he has, like, 13 minutes before he's dead, but, like, he, you know, Batman just put him into the hot water and he was fine within a second, so I don't think, it's not like he had to get him back home, you know, the the solution was right there in front of him. Yeah. (laughs) It's weird. It's like, there's just, like, it's like they're trying to end the fight scene because they need to let the villain go his own way and let them go their own way, so they kind of just rushed it and didn't actually think of a reasonable thing for either of them to do. Yeah. Um, something I could give the movie props for and only to some extent, cause it's like, they're, it's not like it's amazing sets that they made for this movie, but it is a very practical movie. I mean, there's definitely green screen and some bad <laughs> physics, like you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, but there's some uh, sets that were actually built in this movie. I, I would say that the sets have a little bit of personality during the motorcycle scene. Like those sets were kind of fun. You know, there were some yeah, cool shots. I, I, I'm apprehensive to give them too much credit for the sets, because those sets were made for the Tim Burton movie. How many of them were um, reused? I don't know how many of them were reused necessarily, but it is an aesthetic that was made for the Tim Burton Batman, Mm. right? So it's probably the same set designer. I can't say that for sure offhand. But I would bet, like, same set designer for all four movies. If not, they're at the very least looking back at the Tim Burton movies and duplicating what was in those movies. Yeah. I guess that's a fair point. I, I, I'll i just, I'll get, like, you know, I, I definitely don't think you can give too much credit then, but it's just like, yeah, you know, it looks better than some MCU movies, in my yeah. opinion. I, I won't disagree. It does look nice. It is. It is not... Like, good sets, even if they are sets from a better movie. 
I will say, like, I'm not that impressed with the Wayne, like Bruce Wayne's mansion or anything. They do use that set a lot. That's just kind of generic. But aside from that, it's a pretty, pretty cool looking movie. The fucking lab that Poison Ivy was like created in was a pretty good set. Yeah, um, that one was probably oh, oh. now. It's <laughs> it's this like weird, you know. Like, like greenhouse plant lab and then it just like <laughs> opens up into this arena where people are surrounding this evil doctor injecting super strength serum into a prisoner on death row yeah did she not like, know that room existed because she seemed really <laughs> surprised when that was revealed yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that that scene cracks just, me up. That fucking guy cracks me up. <laughs> yeah. It's a funny movie for sure. Um I did I did laugh a lot throughout the entire thing. And a lot of time I, what I was going to say before is it's very rare in my opinion. Like I think personally it's very rare for a movie that is trying to be funny to be unironically good like, you know i mean ironically good i should say because most of the time when it's like iron something's ironically good it's because it's trying to be serious and it fails miserably um but this is trying to be funny and it like it it's like it's still it actually is kind of pulling it off but just you know it's not pulling it off in the way they intended it <laughs> it's like yeah, su such yeah. a bad joke it's like laughing at your dad making a really bad joke you know yeah, a lot of comedies, bad comedies, are kind of hard to sit through, but this movie, whenever it attempts comedy, it does manage to be funny, if only ironically. Um, yeah, for sure. One thing I think we should talk about, we were talking about, like, shoehorning in too many villains. They also shoehorn in too many heroes, because Batgirl shows up in this movie and yeah. does basically nothing. <laughs> like, if Batgirl yeah. were not in this movie, nothing would change. It'd be the same movie. There there really is, like, she feels very disconnected from the main plot. Uh, like... I I guess she's kind of tied into, like, the Alfred dying subplot, but... Well, she's Even a character then. that's there to criticize Batman. I'm sorry I'm interrupting you. No, oh, you're good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like she does not serve much of a purpose in this movie. Like, this, she feels like a character the studio was like, we need Batgirl in the movie. We want to sell yeah. Batgirl merch, so put Batgirl in the movie. Yeah, it's it it was silly. There was even a joke about like how you can buy the toys in the movie, which I'm sure existed. Like I think it was like what Poison Ivy said it, like you can get the free like there was a joke about buying her in like freezer as like a toy at one point. Um uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean with Batgirl, it's like they do spend a lot of time with her. This movie was two hours. Honestly, an hour and a half probably would have been better. I, I didn't feel the time that much. I actually felt the time more in movie number two, which we'll get to in a minute. Um, but, uh, and that yeah, one was it, shorter. I, but, I was kind of surprised when I looked it up and it was two hours. I'm like, oof, I do not remember that being two hours. You could cut Cat, uh, not Cat, Batwoman out of the movie, though, and have a hour and 30 minute long movie. You, I like, I like the motorcycle scene though. That was like one of the more fun scenes in the movie, in my opinion. It was very practical. Oh, it was yeah. shot decently. <laughs> Where she shows up and there's just like biker gangs full of like characters from the Warriors. <laughs> Who was that like, one guy that was in it that you pointed <laughs> out? Oh, Coolio! Coolio's <laughs> just in the movie for some reason. <laughs> Just as himself, I think, but maybe yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, and all all the gangs have their own little theme. There's like a Clockwork Orange gang. Yeah, I noticed that. That was weird. That, that was, was weird. weird. Um, um, that and and Space Jam too, man. <laughs> uh, if you want to talk about, it, we were talking about toys. One tie-in to this movie that there, I have a very fun fact about 
at Six Flags Over Texas, which is very close to where I live. I, I had a season pass there for quite a long time. There is a ride called the Mr. Freeze, which what? opened around the time this movie was released. It was supposed to be a tie-in promotion. And they asked Schwarzenegger and George Clooney to come. And Schwarzenegger was kind of like, yeah, maybe. And then George Clooney said no. And Schwarzenegger's like, I was just doing it as a favor. If Clooney's not coming, I'm not coming either. <laughs> so both of them were invited to the opening of that ride. And neither of them came. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. <laughs> it was How's the Ride? Have you ever been on it? Uh, I don't think I have, which is weird. Because I've been on... Pretty much every other ride at Six Flags. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah. might, I might sure to go out there this summer. I want to get a picture of me in front of the uh, Mr. Snow Cone entrance. <laughs> because they, they, they did set up the queue to the ride like Mr. Freeze's lair in this movie. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like the Mr. Freeze's lair was an okay, okay set, too. Like, no, nah, it wasn't like, it wasn't anything like groundbreaking or anything. It wasn't like, wasn't amazing, but it was, it was, it, it was fitting, you know, it was weird yeah. when they played the Miser he's, Brothers he's Christmas his... on the TV. <laughs> uh, a year without Santa. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. There was that. I, I was calling it that, but there actually is a Miser Brothers Christmas special now. Forgot. Yes. I forgot that they did that. Um, um, everybody knows that because of the Miser Brothers, but. That's why I guess that's why that special exists. <laughs> uh, Freeze is an odd character in this movie. You and I were talking about it because he's kind of sympathetic. Like, like Freeze in the comics is supposed to be a sympathetic character. Like he's he's trying to like cure his wife's disease and he he has issues himself. But then then they play the villain just so evil in some scenes in this movie that it like it kills any like sympathy you might have for him yeah yeah it definitely does and even at the end they're trying to like <laughs> he kind of has like a redemption at the end of it but it's just kind of at this point it's like you kind of blew it <laughs> i was laughing because there's a moment where he just straight up is like oh batman uh your emotions make you weak. That's why I win. Ha 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 ha! It's like, <laughs> why would you? Why would you have a ca uh, like a villain just like look basically straight into camera and just say that, right? <laughs> like that is the implication in a lot of like villain hero scenes. Like the villain does something to like mess with the hero's emotions, and it's like. Haha, ha, I'm the villain because I have no emotions and I uh, you're weak because you have these emotions. But to just have him say it. <laughs> yeah. Um, a much better Batman movie if you exclude the first 30 minutes of it that shouldn't even really count. The killing joke. That one kind of does the sympathetic. It takes a villain that is pretty much irredeemable at this point. That being the Joker. And they try to do something with redemption at the end. Without and without spoiling it too much, they take it in a very real. They take a really realistic approach with it that I really like. It is kind of trying to make you the like that movie does kind of try to make you sympathize with the Joker's character a little bit, but it's also self aware that you can't pull like what they tried to do with Mister Fre like with Freezer at this point. Like it's just yeah, there is there is a limit. There is going too far, and this movie acknowledges that, which I did really like about it. The last last five minutes, like the killing joke as a whole, is fine, but the last five minutes are really fucking cool. <clears throat> um, and then yeah, Freezer. It's just like it feels like <sighs> I've seen that in a lot of movies and TV shows where they like take a character beyond the point of redemption and then try to still make them kind of sympathetic. Sometimes it's just a stupid show that does that, like Family Guy. <laughs> They'll yeah. make you, you're supposed to care about Brian Griffin, even though he's done horrible, horrible fucking things, but then they make a sad episode where he dies. <laughs> uh. um, yeah. I... I don't, I don't think they succeeded in making Freeze sympathetic in this movie. In this no. movie, I do think he is a character who can be sympathetic if you write him correctly. Yeah. 
Kind of disappointed we've never gotten another movie with Freeze in it. But it could happen. He, I get I get that he doesn't he doesn't really fit in the like uh the the Dark Knight trilogy. He wouldn't really fit in that well. Yeah. He is kind of he is kind of a silly villain. Yeah, I, w- I wish that, uh, I hope another show or movie comes out where they do kind of try to focus on some of the sillier villains, though, because it kind of feels like Joker, Bane, Harley Quinn. Those are the ones that people keep trying to go for now. It was cool that the first, the Batman Begins, picked Scarecrow. Yeah. But after that, it just kind of feels like all these movies, like there's another Joker movie now where he doesn't, he's not like the traditional Joker. It's just Harley Quinn has like three fucking movies now and a TV show. Yeah. Um, you know, this, this movie is better than a lot of the DCEU. I'll give it that much. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't comment on those actually. Cause I've seen, uh, I think I saw Man of Steel, like when I was in high school and I was bored of my mind watching it. Um, I didn't watch Batman v Superman, the Bat, Superman, Batman v Superman, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't watch, uh. Uh, Justice League, Wonder Woman, Aquaman. I did watch Shazam and Joker, and I thought Shaz- Shazam was very charming, and Joker was overrated, but and good. I liked it. Um, so I haven't. I, I guess I haven't seen them, but I'm so turned off by them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I would I would rather watch this than most of the. I mean. This is, like, my third time watching... I think this is the third time I've watched both these movies, so... Yeah. I liked this Obviously. a lot more than uh, Age of Ultron. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of super movie, superhero movies we could pull up and be like, well, I'd rather watch it than this one. Or this one. Yeah. Or this one. That's, Marvel's got some good ones, but they have some really fucking boring movies, too. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, speak... Speaking of superhero movies we could compare this to, would you like to move on? Yeah, we can move on. Movie? Yeah, so our next movie is Catwoman from 2004, directed by Pitoff. 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 Single, single name, no last name. Thinks he's too good for a last name. Um, so Catwoman is a movie about uh, the titular c- character Catwoman. <laughs> <laughs> on how she becomes Catwoman. It has almost nothing to do with the Batman universe. It's implied at the end that maybe she's in Gotham now. Um, maybe that's what they're going for. It's not even... I, I think that's what they're going for because they have her leave her town and leave a goodbye note. But it's just a, it's a movie... It's just supposed to be an origin movie for this character, but it makes no effort to connect to the Batman like universe at all. Like It's very much just like let's take this superhero and put him in New York like, or put her in New York uh, or a New yeah. York like town. I think they're in New York. Um, I, do they? I don't know that they say what city they're in. I don't know. It's a New York like city at the very least. It, it would make sense that they were in New York, although they don't really have any of the big New York landmarks in it. So yeah. that makes me think it probably isn't New York. Yeah, I guess so. Um, um, she gets killed by this evil makeup company. And, uh, then she is brought back to life by cat breath. And then she gets cat superpowers, which basically, and she, she gets angry at dogs that walk by and she probably doesn't like water. She doesn't like the rain, doesn't like that rain. And that's basically the main story. Oh, then she tries to kill the people who tried to kill her that she just randomly starts to remember after not being able to remember with little to no explanation of how she remembers them. I guess cats have a good memory. Um, this movie is very funny, very much like Batman and Robin, (laughs) but, uh, I think that it has, it's none of its genuine humor. And I think that it actually has zero redeeming qualities. (laughs) <laughs> I think there are some tongue in cheek moments. Like there are moments they know they're being a little silly. Yeah. But then there's movie there's moments where they go so off the rails that it's like how can you take anything else in this movie seriously after after Halle Berry rubs catnip on her face? How do you recover <laughs> from this? How do you make a I'm serious so movie after that? It's, I, I love, I love 
Halle Berry doing cat shit in this movie. It's so funny. <laughs> It is a really funny movie. I, I okay, so like, yeah, obviously some of that shit is supposed to be funny. Um, yeah, but and it and it is funny, so I, I guess I could give it that. But it's just so poorly made. It's so poorly made. Where Batman and Robin at least has the sets. Batman and Robin at least has a couple of cool shots. Um, you know, the costumes are not. The costumes at least have personality. You know. In this one, she looks like she's wearing, like, a BDSM <laughs> shit, like... Yeah, if your dominatrix was a superhero. <laughs> it's, it's my pitch for a superhero movie. We're gonna make Super Dom. Yeah. It's just gonna be about a dominatrix who, who you know, let's dominate crime. Ha <laughs> ha, whip crack. Yeah. That's my pitch for a movie. <laughs> that... that... Batman and Robin also, like, had, like, actual fight in it where, like, I feel like almost any time Halle Berry's actually doing something in this movie, uh, it's CG. <laughs> it's CG yeah, to Halle Berry. There is, there is a lot of CG in this movie. Yeah. Like, it's not the worst CG, but it is, like, too much of not very good CG. Yeah. Yeah, it's not appealing to look at all the time, and it's kind of funny. It, it kind of adds to the humor a little bit, especially because it does feel like such an early 2000s thing to do. Like, it, I got fucking Son of the Mask vibes from watching that, which, ooh, that's a that's one maybe to add to the list one day. That's a fucking awful movie mm. um, where they have, like, the fucking baby running around, and, like, it's yeah. just the most uncanny looking thing I've ever seen in my life. This is better, than, be that. This is better than that. This is better than that. For sure, for sure. Um, I mean, you want to talk about, like, not connecting to the Batman universe at all. Uh, first off, they don't even get Catwoman's name right. Cause her, her name is, like, Prudence in this movie. S Patience? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not her name in the comics. Um, and also she has, like, cat powers in this movie, and i pretty sure typically Catwoman does not have powers. Now, canon is an unholy abyss, and I'm sure someone is going to hit me in the comments with, like, Oh, well, actually, in, uh, Universe 1312 with, uh, the new adventures of Catwoman, she had powers. I don't care. Most of the time, Catwoman doesn't have powers, like... Yeah. Every other adaptation I have seen of Catwoman does not have powers. I think this is essentially, like, the Sonic movie would have had, like, just as much to do with Sonic if they didn't change the design. Like, I think that's the level it would have been on if they didn't fix the design and actually make it look like the character. Because that movie was like, oh, let's put him in a city, let's put him... <laughs> let's, like, have a plot that has nothing to do with, like, the actual games or have anything to do with that world. Well, uh, mm -hmm. She I is, feel like that's she does, a, <clears throat> she does do some burglary in this film, which is true to the character, although it's a very short sequence. Yeah, but that's like in, uh, in the grand scheme of things. That although bank destroys it, itself, though, you know, you <laughs> shove a gun down at something and the glass breaks before you actually impact it. I only know that because I watched <laughs> the Adam and Pals. I got to give him credit for that. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite parts of the movie, because she, like, knocks a dude over and then, like, skis, like, like snowboards across the room on a man's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just, like, that's one of those moments where it's like, okay, that was probably a joke. That was probably meant to be funny. I, I can give a pass for that. Yeah. Um, I think it's just funny because of how awful it looks. <laughs> it It is a pretty awful movie. <laughs> um, and of course... <laughs> uh, uh, girl power movie, you know? It's, it's got a, female, a strong independent female lead and a strong female villain. And what else would the villain be in your girl power movie but evil makeup? <laughs> evil makeup company. Evil make <laughs> it's uh this is such like like 
bullshit girl power. Like, very, very late 90s, early 2000s girl power stuff. Uh-huh. Where it's like, uh, no, wrong, incorrect. <laughs> I, uh... I showed this. I actually, sh- I've showed both of these movies at bad movie nights with my friends. Mm-hmm. These were both very early additions to bad movie night. Uh, and when we watched this, just like any time something really stupid, really ridiculous would happen, we would turn to like one of our female friends and just be like, "Isn't this empowering? Do you feel <laughs> empowered yet?" <laughs> I, uh, I've never seen this one before. I, I, I think I saw Batman and Robin when I was younger. A lot of it was familiar, and I felt like, even before we watched it, I kind of felt like it was something I'd seen before. But uh, this, I'm like almost certain I've never seen before. This was like the first time, and uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect going in, but <laughs> it was a little different from this, I guess. The fucking CGI cat I wasn't expecting. That was funny. <laughs> that was like my favorite thing in the movie. Like, these cats surround her and just breathe into her to make her Catwoman. (laughs) What other cat things do you think she does does now? Do you think she, like, shits in a box at her house? (laughs) She's got all these other things down. Yeah. You think she runs out in front of traffic and gets hit by a car? She, just, like she, like because she's she's got like the boyfriend in this movie, the the cop she's sort of dating. You think he like invites her over and like she walks into his house and just like knocks a vase over <laughs> and then runs into a different room really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I cat sit for my brother occasionally. He's got like three of them. One of them just completely fucks off, so I never see him. He'll come out when it's time to eat. <laughs> But the other two, they just do like, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be in a room and then one of them will just knock a plant over that they have in their house. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. And now there's dirt everywhere. Then they run, they sprint into the other room. It's just <laughs> fucking cats. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um. I do think that uh, this movie is more poorly made than Batman and Robin, but for a, lot, a couple of other reasons too. And I was, I was about to say it doesn't have quite like the reverse shot thing like an edit in choice that weird but honestly i do think it does i I think it's actually more consistently weird with the edit in choices because it's kind of like bohemian rhapsody and how frequently they cut the camera yeah like there are scenes where they are cutting nonstop, um and they do not leave it on the like they do not they're not sometimes they're not showing the appropriate thing on screen sometimes they're playing a certain shot not nearly long enough um i yeah, visually, this is not a very good movie. Um, it's just, like, little things, too, though. If you can just, like, time your cuts out more. Like, you don't have to use every single shot <laughs> you got for the movie. It's okay to have B-roll that does not get used. I do think Batman and Robin is probably a little more sincere. Yeah. Like, this is this is sort of a product. This is, I mean... They were trying to get a Catwoman movie off the ground for a while at this point. I think they wanted to do one, like, right after Batman Returns with Michelle Pfeiffer re- reprising the role from Batman Returns. And yeah. it it didn't happen, and it got kicked around for, like, probably a decade, because that, that came out in 92, 93, yeah. Batman Returns. I remember and the one so in Batman the, Returns like, being all right. I remember not liking it that much, but it's been a while since yeah, I've seen it. It has been a while for me, too. The only one I can say with great confidence that I like is the 89 Batman. Mm-hmm. I do really like that one. Yeah. I like um, the Dark Knight movies, too, but um, not so much well, the Dark yeah, Knight Rises. Not, not so much the Dark Knight Rises. That's that's sort of a separate franchise in my head. I, I mean, I think yeah, Batman... I, be- Batman Begins, like, started as a prequel to the 89 Batman series, and then, uh, who directed those? Christopher Nolan. Christopher Nolan was just like, nah, we're gonna do our own thing. I would say Nolan's personality really shines through in those movies, so it almost starts to feel more like a Nolan movie than a Batman movie at points. Yeah. Well, 
which can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, it's it's like you know, it's nice I that mean, he actually got some control of it. Batman eighty nine is a very Tim Burton movie, so yeah, that's true. So one thing these two have in common, apart from both being based on Batman comics, uh, they both feature close personal friends of Sylvester Stallone. Oh yeah, uh, Batman and Robin has. Uh, Friends of Stallone who were both in Total Recall. Because Batman and Robin has Schwarzenegger. Catwoman has Sharon Stone. Hey. Who was married to Stallone for a while. Uh, hey guys, this is uh, Future Matt. Um, turns out uh, Sylvester Stallone and Sharon Stone were never married. I don't know why I thought they were. I think I got her confused with Brigitte Nielsen. Um... Just, just wanted to clarify that uh, ev- everything I'm saying here is complete shit. Uh, Stallone and Sharon Stone were never married. My bad. She is the lead villain in this movie. Yeah. Um, and she kills her husband, as Sharon Stone is ought to do. I don't think there's a single Sharon Stone movie where she doesn't at least try to kill her husband. <laughs> yeah. Did she try to kill her husband in real life, too? To my knowledge, she never tried to kill Stallone. Although, it's so weird to me that they were married, because they were in a movie together called The Specialist, and they have no fucking chemistry. (laughs) Like, they are terrible together on screen. She has way more chemistry with Schwarzenegger and Total Recall. Yeah. But then again, Total Recall's from Paul Verhoeven, who's a great director, so... Is there anyone who's, Uh like, unironically good in this movie, you think? I'm trying to think. There are scenes I think are unironically good. Yeah. I actually, I I enjoyed that scene where they're in the rafters over Cirque du Soleil. And she, she has like the banter with her cop boyfriend. And the cop boyfriend doesn't know it's her. And yeah. I thought, I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah, I, I hear you. It's it, it was kind of a fun movie. A lot of it, I love it was for me laughing at it, but I will give it this. It wasn't boring. No, I, I don't think either of these movies are boring. I think these are both very funny, very enjoyable movies. Yeah, I could watch them both again. <laughs> I mean, like I said, this is my third time watching both of them, so. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I am clearly a fan of both yes. movies. Yes. Um, it was a fun way to start this, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I thought of this concept, this is, like, one of the very first movies I thought of. I might even have thought of, like, Batman and Robin versus Catwoman before I had the idea for the podcast. <laughs> like, I might have had that <laughs> idea and been like, what if I just did a podcast that was movie versus movie, but they were all bad movies? Yeah. I don't remember which order those two thoughts came in, but it was at the very least, this was one of the very first things I thought of for this podcast. Yeah, I think it was a good I think it was a good one, especially since it's not just two bad superhero movies, it's like two bad superhero movies that deal with like Batman characters. Feels yeah. feels like a solid way to solid connection to make with them. Yeah. The only other thing I might could have done, we could have done Batman and Robin versus Superman 4. Because they are both the fourth movie in the franchise. But I think I like this one a little better. Um, yeah. I haven't even seen Superman 4, so I wouldn't know how well that pairs up. Yeah. Are there more than one bad... I mean, you could do Superman 4 versus Man of Steel. I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves there. Yeah. And Man uh, of Steel was pretty well received, actually, wasn't it? It was a little divisive, but there were people who liked it. Mm. unlike superman 4 which was pretty universally disliked (laughs) um we could definitely do that versus the supergirl movie oh yeah that released i I believe between the third and fourth superman movies it might have been between the second and third but it was not good going back to that cop scene where it's her and the cop at the carnival i kind of hear what you're saying um with it being, like, fun banter between the two of them. I, I hear ya. Yeah. My, I think my only gripe there is I feel like it's almost a little obvious at that point that it's her. And I thought that he was kind of playfully aware of that. And maybe they were going to take that in a different direction where he thought her intentions were good or something like that. But 
I don't know. Maybe maybe that's a big assumption to make about someone. So maybe I'm overthinking that a little bit. But it it, it is stupid that he doesn't realize it's her. Yeah. And and as both of us managed to point out, uh. He should be off that case if his girlfriend is the prime suspect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is a huge conflict of interest. <laughs> yeah, he's like the one interrogating her as if that wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, there is one scene in this movie I want to point out because Venom straight up stole it. The, the 2019, 2018 Venom movie straight up stole this scene. And I'm sure Catwoman was not the first to do it. It's not an original scene. But uh, at the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where she, like her neighbors are throwing this loud house party. And she's like, oh, turn it down. But, you know, she's like sad and weak and she can't do it. And then she gets the powers and they're having another loud house party. So she shows up and wrecks everything. Which happens nearly verbatim in Venom. Like, yeah. it's almost the exact same scene in Venom. Th- this, uh, th- there's no, like, gain of powers in the scene, but it kind of reminded me of Killer Bean Forever's opening scene. That glorious opening scene, by the way. <laughs> that gets you p- pumped for mm. the rest of the movie. Yeah, but that is, that's that, sort that's of, different. like, the lead-in. That's yeah. the lead-in to the movie. This is, like set up payoff yeah and w- the payoff is just super super obvious yeah well do you have anything else to say about catwoman or batman and robin i don't think so i, th- I think i've got i went for everything i wanted to talk about with both of them um yeah not not good by traditional standards at all but not boring i do think that like I don't even know how I'd rate these if we like if I was to rate them. I I, I guess for now I'd say Catwoman's like a one out of ten, <laughs> and Batman and Robin's like a three out of ten. I don't know. Cat Catwoman, like I said, I I do find it funny. It's not boring, so maybe it deserves like a two for that. I don't know, but I just think that think, everything in it is bad. <laughs> I think I have the exact same score for these on IMDb. Yeah, Batman and Robin. I like I like the sets. Some of the costumes have personality at the very least. There's some decent shots. And, yeah, I don't know. It's really goofy, but it seems at least a little bit more self-aware that it's goofy. Catwoman is a good time. No, not going to diss it completely, but it's just, like, a broken movie. It's just bad. <laughs> I would definitely say Batman and Robin wins this one, in my opinion. <laughs> ba- Batman and Robin. Okay, well, then I get to be dissenting opinion today. Yes. Because I prefer Catwoman. I'm going to go yeah. Catwoman. All right. I'm picking Catwoman. Before we watched these, I was leaning Catwoman. I was going to give them a chance on a rewatch, but I was leaning Catwoman partially because it's not a part of a franchise. The only thing it's ruining is itself. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Fair. And also, I just... It takes itself more seriously which I could definitely see you arguing the opposite side of that and going like, well, Batman and Robin, it knows that it's a silly movie. But I think it's a little funnier that it takes itself so seriously, where Batman and Robin, some of it feels kind of lame. And and rewatching them, I really got that. I felt like Batman and Robin was so juvenile and so predictable. Like it was a kid's cartoon. Yeah. And I, I knew what was going to happen, whereas Catwoman is just, like, balls out insanity. Like, yeah. There are definitely predictable moments. For sure there are predictable moments, but it feels so not what you would expect. It feels really weird and out there. Um, not Not at all. Like, if you were just making a Catwoman movie... I don't know how you would come up with this. I do see where you're um, coming from. I, I, I actually really do see where you're coming from with it. And, and I, I do think these two movies are very close. I think you can yeah. definitely argue both sides of this. I could very easily make the argument that Batman and Robin is better. 
I, I, I just had more fun watching Batman and Robin at the end of the day. Um, Catwoman, I did. I, I, I had a lot of fun watching it. I honestly think that entire climax of the movie is pretty predictable, though. It just kind of feels like, a, I mean, Batman and Robin's kind of the same way, too. But it's still throwing in really stupid lines. It's still throwing in really weird choices in the filmmaking and the shots yeah uh like even when they're fighting poison ivy that's like when the most noticeable weird editing choice like happened in the movie um and there's still like just these really funny moments like at the end of very end of batman and robin you're actually the one who pointed this out he's just fucking waiting in the prison cell like she was there for at least an hour (laughs) he was waiting to make a catchphrase or say something clever (laughs) yeah um, yeah, he's just standing in the shadow, and then all of a sudden he lights up and says something, and it's like, there's no door there. He was just standing there, waiting for a dramatic moment. Yeah, I would say like the last 15, 20 minutes, I was uh, I was ready to hit a climax. Um, we do have a tiebreaker, since Michael and I have disagreed, and the public is with you, Michael. It's... By a very wide margin, Batman oh, put, and Robin. You put the poll up? I put the poll up. It is on the YouTube community tab. As Missed that. All, all polls, all future episodes of... Uh, forgot the name of my own show. Hollow Victories. All future episodes of Hollow Victories. The poll will be available in the YouTube community tab on my uh, YouTube page. I'll probably put it up the day this video goes up. So if you want to go vote for the next movie, you can. With 88% of the vote, it's Batman and Robin. I'm surprised it was that wide a margin. I thought it was going to be a lot closer than that. It's the Bat credit card, Um, man. I'm telling you. (laughs) The Bat credit card. I just Uh, voted for Batman and Robin, too. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that is a pretty big... That is a pretty big difference. Yeah, uh, out of 66 votes. So, I'm not sure what that breaks down as. In terms of a 60, 88% of 66 votes versus 12% for Catwoman. Um, I, I am surprised it was not closer, but I, I guess we're going to crown Batman and Robin the winner for this episode. Fuck yeah! Okay. Hooray for Batman and Robin. Hooray for uh, Batman and Robin. I I will say uh, IMDb ratings, 3.8 for Batman and Robin, 3.4 for Catwoman. I'll try to avoid so, looking at the, uh, what, whatever people vote for on the YouTube tab so I don't know the answer until the end. Um, In future I, I episodes. Was, I was keeping tabs on it, and... I knew Batman and Robin was probably going to win because it, it got off to a really early lead. Yeah. that's a, I'm happy that that many people engaged with it. Um, that's, a, that's good to see. Especially since we hadn't even announced the show or let yeah. anyone know that this was for a show. This yeah. is just a poll I put up. Hey, if you're listening to the show, your vote matters, okay? As long as you vote for Batman and Robin. Well, not anymore. Not anymore. <laughs> okay, now your vote doesn't matter. But your no. vote can matter for yes. our next episode. Next episode, it's the clash of uh, comic strip characters. You know, today we got comic books. We're moving yes. to comic strips. Hell yeah. It's Garfield. Uh, Bill Murray's Garfield versus Owen Wilson's Marmaduke. Fuck yeah. I've seen Garfield. I've never seen Marmaduke. It'll be fun to rewatch Garfield. <laughs> I have I, I saw Garfield when I was very, very young. I remember basically nothing about it. I say pretty I, much same. I have never seen Marmaduke, and I feel like probably most people never saw Marmaduke. I think most people forgot there even was a Marmaduke movie. Yeah, the, the Garfield one at least got memed on a little bit. Like it definitely has had its acknowledgement. Well, I mean, Garfield is more of a meme than Marmaduke, so that's probably yeah. why. Probably why. We'll save freaking... that to... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Save, save the discussion for next time. Yes. All right. Uh, any any closing remarks? Uh, not really. This was fun. Uh, uh, this is just the first episode, just getting started with it. Uh, getting a feel yes, for things, indeed. but uh, 
but it's been fun. Me and Matt have recorded for recorded shit for a while now, though, so I think we're I think we're used to talking to each other about this kind of stupid shit. <laughs> what's yes. What's better, Marmaduke or Garfield? Seems like a pretty good conversation <laughs> for us. <laughs> All right. Until next time, uh, for my co-host um, Mackle Movie Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. This is Hollow Victories. See you in the next one. Peace out. Welcome to the Witch Movie is Shittier podcast. I'm your host, Mackle James Shadackle, and I guess I guess I'm going solo with this shit now. Today. Wow, trying to kick me out of my own podcast <laughs> on episode one. <laughs> if you put that in, put it in at the end. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs>